American Ninja Warrior is a show that tests strength, agility, and morals. But in this series, we're here to find out, are pro climbers superior when it comes to American Ninja Warrior? In last season's USA vs. The World 2, we had two pro climbers who absolutely dominated the show. And in this season, USA vs. The World 3, we now have three pro climbers. And this is a huge event for the rock climbing community. Tons of people came out. We had Megan Martin, Alex Honnold, <laughs> Trust me, that's, that's definitely him. And this mustachioed gentleman. We kind of got robbed of all of our glory last year. And Team Europe are the world champions! And I knew, I was like, oh, like, if I was on the team, there's no way that would happen. Wow, those are some big words. Thankfully, he's up first, so he can prove it. Isaac Caldero is going to push it to make sure he wins a point here. No! <laughs> yeah. Thank God, right? Thank God this guy is on the team. That You know, we wouldn't have lost last year if he was here. So next up in Heat 1, we got Team Japan. And last year, Japan got zero points across the entire competition. So they're really just out to score some points, right? They just want to do better than last year, which is uh, just doing anything at all. Struggled on this obstacle in past competitions. Woo! So the first Heat was kind of lackluster. Everybody falls on this obstacle, all three competitors, so it just comes down to time. But for some reason, when the European contestant gets there, the announcer's like, And his feet hit the walls at different times. Not even close, really. That's not even close! So Team USA gets a point, and we move in to the second heat, where Team Europe goes first. And Team Europe's competitor actually sticks the jump. Apparently, this is super rare. He makes it up the warp wall and all the way to the very end of the course, where he somehow uh, fumbles grabbing th these ropes, this rope wall at the end. I don't know how, like uh, with everything that he was able to hold on to and grab, this is the thing that he falls on, but uh, you know, that's what happened. So needless to say, it's gonna be hard to beat this guy, right? Japan has some big shoes to fill, but thankfully their next competitor that's ready to go is none other than Kong. Next for Team Japan is Kenji Takahashi, and he's known by his nickname, Kong. I was kind of surprised, like, when they said the next guy's name was Kong, I was expecting this, like, massive dude, right? He's like five foot ten, but Kong gets onto the course and <laughs> he immediately fails. And the final competitor for He2 from Team USA is The Bull, an American Ninja Warrior legend known for spreading positivity and awareness about alopecia. This guy's so cool, he makes me wish I had alopecia, okay? And he flies through the course, probably because he's more aerodynamic. But he forgot one thing. This was the year of the jumping spider. Take advantage of going last. Oh, oh no! So since Team Europe made it the furthest, they get a point, meaning the score is now one to one. And for the final heat of round one, Japan is up first. You have to do it, don't you understand? We can't get zero points again. Now get out there and score us some points. He might as well go for broke. The next competitor is from Team Europe, and it's Tim Sheaf, a parkour legend. And he smashes this course. He makes it across the uh, little propeller thing, uh, the one that Kong fell on, makes it to the warped wall, which is basically just a parkour obstacle. Freaking parkours his way all the way to the uh, lache rope thingy and breaks the course record. And it looks like Team Europe is about to score another point, but Team USA still has to go. And uh, they bring out the just degenerate piece of shit uh, competitor on their team. And uh, somehow he ends up winning. Not all stories have a, ha have a happy ending, but you can be assured that your story will have a happy ending with Rungni Apparel. Transition. About six months ago, I got sponsored by Rungni Apparel because I did a chalk tier list and found out that their chalk, Mag Dust, was the best chalk on the market. Here, take some for free. <laughs> you know why all those contestants fell on the jumping spider? Because they didn't have Mag Dust. If they had Mag Dust, the hardest part of the jumping spider would have been getting off because their hands would have been stuck to the wall. You follow what I'm saying? It's really grippy chalk. It's really good. But they don't just have chalk. Rugney also has apparel. And this is grade A athletic apparel. This is the Wagyu beef of athletic apparel. So if you want to try Rungni for yourself, click the link in the description below. We're doing a raffle. That's right. A raffle. <laughs> you can win a year's supply of mag dust. I forgot I threw it. A year's supply of mag dust. You can win my Church of Dynoology t-shirt. You can win my favorite climbing pants. I'm wearing them right now. Do you see them? They're pretty cool. And also while you're at the store, pick yourself up something nice. Use code Dino, get 15% off. Courtesy of me, right? I just thought I'd float that off your way. Nice little favor. 
let's get in to round two. Now round two is gonna be where we start to see some of our pro climbers come in, starting with Stefano Gasolfi. And last year, Stefano's run did not go well. Now this was pretty controversial at the time because salmon is not the dish of choice in Italy. Italians don't, they don't eat a lot of salmon, so it wasn't really fair to Stefano. So they decided this year to try to uh, help him out a little bit. They renamed it to the Linguini Ladder. But the question was, would this help? It is immediately clear that Stefano is just built differently. Not only does he make it across the hanging panel things, but he also sticks not one, but two dinos. Well, he has an opportunity here if he can pick up the pace here. And with a performance like this, surely he'll finish the course in record time. Could make that save. Man, I, uh, but he's uh, on just like a helicopter. So after Stefano's run, the next competitor up is the bull. But unfortunately for him, he got hung up on the Linguini ladder. So at this point, if Japan wants to win the first heat of round two, they basically have to complete the entire course. So they bring out the big guns, the, the most intense competitor of all, their pro badminton player. And this guy actually does pretty well. He makes it up the Linguini ladder, but gets too pumped out to finish the next obstacle. Athletes. To be quite honest with you, I don't know how that's gonna relate. Badminton can't help you. Badminton can't help you here. This was definitely one of my favorite episodes of Ninja Warrior, just because of how many times the announcers just said aggressive shit like this. But this does further prove my thesis statement that pro climbers are better at American Ninja Warrior than any other pro athlete. And because of this, Stefano gets two points for Team Europe, pushing them into the lead. For the second heat of round two, first up for Team Europe is Tim Sheaf. And Tim actually makes it just as far as the pro badminton player does before he, he gets too pumped out and he falls down, proving that parkour and badminton are basically the same thing. They also had to substitute one of the American contestants out because I guess he had a fever. Uh, like, you know, he, he was running a little hot. He had a little bit of a cold. So they were like, oh, you can't compete. And I was curious, how did they check <laughs> what happened where they're just like walking by uh the contestants and they're like you you look like you have a fever <laughs> my only guess is maybe his body was having like an immune response to being too close to uh drew dreschel so he started feeling ill so drew takes this guy's place finishes the course japan has a chance to uh you know take some points back from team usa but oh! what? so team usa wins the round getting two points pushing them back into the lead it's the final heat of round two. First up is Team USA with an iconic Ninja Warrior, the Weatherman. Not only does the Weatherman complete the entire course on this run, but he also sets a new course record. Joe Moran has given the fastest time on stage two this year. Things are looking bad for our pro climbers. If they have any chance of winning, they cannot let Team USA get another two points. But thankfully, the next competitor up for the final heat of round two is Sean McCall. Sean gets to the Linguini ladder. He lives in France, which is close enough to Italy to understand how Linguini works. Next up is the unstable bridge, uh, one of the hardest obstacles. He's a pro climber. Uh, this one, honestly, yeah, it, it, what'd you expect? But wait, Sean still has to do the butterfly bridge. He's off the bridge and he is in waiting. Oh, he's down, he's been the the butterfly, I gotta go oh! So at this point, Sean is flying through the course. He's super close to the weatherman's time. They're neck and neck, but he gets to the final obstacle of the second round, which is a series of three panels, each one heavier than the last. And you have to deadlift these panels off the ground and climb under them. Are you Sean, kidding me? How strong are you now, Sean? Will he do it again? 110 pounds. He's going for it. He's going for it. So Sean pulled out a pretty epic win here. He beat the weatherman's time, who's like a super experienced ninja warrior. He's like one of the best ninja warriors ever. This is Sean's second time ever doing American Ninja Warrior beats his time and uh you would think okay so sean won but you have to remember japan's still in this yeah yeah i know you, you probably were like oh i forgot they were even here japan's still competing and japan doesn't want to lose so japan's like all right it's time to pull out the most intimidating competitor we have the guy everyone fears the biggest the strongest it's kong so Sean McCall wins the third heat, giving Europe two more points, pushing them back into the lead. It's kind of a leapfrog game at this point with everybody except for <laughs> Japan. And I'd like to also point out, we've had two pro climbers compete so far. They both won their heat. 
So now it's time to move on to the final and most important round, round three, where each heat is now worth three points. And round three is where we see a lot of rock climbing. There is a lot of rock climbing specific uh, ninja obstacles here that really benefit rock climbers. And this is made immediately apparent when Team Europe's first competitor, who's not a rock climber, guy's not a pro rock climber, falls like halfway through the course. And if you remember at the beginning of the video, I said uh, we have three pro climbers now, not just two. We have three pro climbers in Ninja Warrior this season. This is where that secret third climber comes in. Team USA brought in a pro climber from Team USA Rock Climbing. And honestly, I've never heard of this guy. I have no idea if he's actually a pro climber. They said he was a pro climber and he competes for Team USA. So I'm going to assume that they're right. But he does seem to be uh, pretty, pretty damn good at rock climbing. He cruises through. Uh, most of the obstacles here and makes it past the obstacle that the European contestant fell on. Absorb the shock here on the transfer. Yes! But the thing about round three that makes it so special is actually one little obstacle, a little after halfway through the course, which we call the V2 bouldering wall. Now you might not be able to tell by looking at it, but this is the most daunting obstacle that has ever existed in American Ninja Warrior. This obstacle has led to the demise of countless ninjas throughout the years. So the question is, can USA's pro climber send a V2? So few competitors ever make it this far, but he wants to finish stage three this time. Come on, Ian. So not only did the uh, American successfully climb V2, but he also on this next obstacle used some like climbing kind of technique to get through it, which I thought was kind of cool. Usually everything is just campusing and swinging by your arms to get to through every obstacle. He actually used his legs, did some kind of cool technique, and makes it to the very end. Digging! Dig, 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 yeah! That is uh, the worst case scenario. So for those of you keeping score, there are nine points left available on the scoreboard. Japan has zero. Last year, Japan finished with zero points. Uh, this is their last chance to win this competition. They could theoretically win all three heats of round three and actually win the entire competition. But if they don't win this heat, they're done for. Listen, I know I was hard on your friend, okay? We're gonna, we're gonna switch gears here, right? We're gonna go with compassion. Please, please just finish a course. Please just don't make us look stupid. And look how easily he's making it through this obstacle, looking strong. Oh! So Team USA wins the first heat, getting three points, pushing them back into the league, continuing this perpetual game of leapfrog before we move into the second heat. USA leads off the second heat with the iconic Weatherman. And while the Weatherman is an American Ninja Warrior legend, he's not a pro climber. That's a different technique from him. And this is where we start to see a little bit of redemption from Team Japan, because at this point, they're kind of done, right? There's nothing they can do, but they can at least not get zero points. And their competitor actually makes it not, not only further than the American competitor, but he finishes the course. He's the first one to finish the entire course. He makes it all the way to the end. So really, Team Japan's guaranteed at least three points, unless, I don't know, Team Europe's competitor also finishes the entire course and in a faster time. But, uh, you know, who even is the next competitor for Team Europe? Oh, it's Stefano Gasolfi. Just perfect form here on the doorknobs. Perfect form! That's fucking right. He makes it through the panels. We're gonna skip the panels because the panels are fucking boring. We're moving to the next obstacle, the crimp crawl. Do you see the way he's looking at the wall right now? Climbers at this level visualize every move before they get on a wall. Climbers, <laughs> or is visualizing, you know, nobody else does this. We look at things and we determine, uh, can, how to, uh, uh. And look at him go, Akbar. Good ascent, wow. This obstacle is basically built for <laughs> for rock climbers, so uh, Stefano gets to the hard part and... Come on. And he's done it! Good, good. But he's not out of the woods yet. Stefano still has to complete. The hardest obstacle has ever been in American Ninja Warrior, an obstacle that almost nobody ever completes. And so really, the, the question is, can Stefano climb V2? His arm should be tired, and yet he's hanging upside down and making it look easy. And he's done it! So Stefano miraculously is able to send the V2 bouldering wall, which leads him into the next obstacle, which is the weird plates thing. He uses the same tech that the other pro climber did, which I thought was kind of cool. No one's finished stage three tonight! Can Gasolfi do it? So Stefano wins heat two for Team Europe, giving Team Europe three points, re-leapfrogging them 
back into first place. This is basically this entire episode. It's just a leapfrog between USA and Europe. And now we're into the final heat. Who will win? Team USA or Team Europe? The odds are really in Team Europe's favor because if Japan or Team Europe win the final heat, Team Europe wins. Team USA has to win this heat for them to win the, the show, <laughs> the episode. So Japan leads off the final heat with their smallest competitor. He's this guy, he's like, I think they said he's like 5'2", and uh, they won't stop talking about how small this guy is. Yusuke Morimoto, a little powerhouse. Morimoto's not a big guy, and he's got that baby face. But he's crazy good at American Ninja Warrior, so he gets super far. He makes it past the panels, the, the, the poles, the, the climbing wall, he gets super far. And at one point, the announcer uh, says this. Well, you see the little shift, trying to make up for lack of wingspan there. What did he say? Well, you see the little shift. Hey, get this little shit off American Ninja Warrior. Get him off my course. So what he actually said was, you see this little shift he's doing. Not this little shit. I don't know. Maybe I'm the only one. I 100% that that's what I heard. But on the bright side, that little shit finished the course. So it's time for Team Europe and our pro climbers to pull out the big guns. Sean McCall goes up. All he needs to do is win this round. If he wins this heat, the show is over. He makes it through the beginning of the course with relative ease, and he sticks the crimp lache move. But now it's time for the biggest challenge of Sean's career. Can he send the V2 bouldering walls? Is this getting old yet? And look at that move. We've never seen anyone do that. I'm just hanging upside down with one arm. No biggie. Not only does Sean complete the V2 bouldering wall against all the odds, but he also pulls out this pretty cool knee bar to recover. I, I thought that was pretty cool. Usually stuff like this I think is silly because it's like, it's not really difficult or anything, but it looks flashy. So everyone's like, Whoa, you would have to be a pro climber to know how to jam your knees into a metal rung. But because it's Sean McCall, it's just cool. Look, Ma, no hands. Are you kidding me? Wow. And I don't know what it was. Maybe it was him sending the V2. Maybe it was the knee bar. But Sean McCall beat Team Japan again and finish the course in record time. So at this point, the show's basically over. People are packing up their things, the production crew's turning off the lights, and everyone's like, oh, hold up, hold up. Let Team USA go up. They still have a competitor left. They still could win, technically. And uh, who is Team USA's next competitor? Oh, it's just the, you know, the mustachioed gentleman from earlier. Sort of like Jesus Christ, this man is the Alpha and the Omega. We started the show with him, and we end the show with him. So everyone's kind of already halfway out the door and kind of, you know, okay, go. Let's go, I wanna go home, get this done, mustachioed guy. But uh, but Team USA seems kinda confident. Team USA smiling over on their bench. They're like, you guys don't know what we know. And the secret that Team USA knows, that none of us know, is that, that the mustachioed gentleman is actually a professional climber. Undercover professional climber infiltrated American Ninja Warrior. We didn't have three pro climbers this season. We had four. Sean McCall and Stefano Gasolfi can't believe it. They're shocked, they're, they're in tears. The undercover climber starts flying through the course. He makes it to the crimp lache. He's got it! He's assaulted! He's got it! He's got it! How could we not tell that he was a pro climber? How did the Americans deceive us like this? Well, fast pace. Look at that. All right, everybody calm down. We know he's a pro climber, but he starts to beat Sean's time, which is next to impossible. And now he's at the V2 bouldering wall. And the question is, can't, can't. Everyone is with him. Oh my god, he can climb V2. <laughs> what are we gonna do? He's making it through the entire course. He's stealing the beta for the plate disc hanging thing. Who will win? American Ninja Warrior. USA versus the world. Three. He's done it! So against all the odds, Team USA pulled out probably the biggest plot twist in American Ninja Warrior history, the undercover mustachioed pro climber and wins USA versus the world round three. But wait, there's something even more important that happens. The palm run of the night. That has to be our palm run for crazy healthy run of the night. I love like dumb marketing shit like this. Like you see all the time, like the NFL is like the Dunkin' Donuts, tightest spiral of the game. And because I don't agree with palm's choice for run of the night, we're going to do our own Rungney's run of the night, which is Sean McCall's flawless run on the course and of course his epic knee bar. Thank you Rungney for sponsoring this episode's run of the night. If you guys want to try to get some free stuff, click the link in the description below. Get some free chalk or whatever, anything you want. Get chalk, pants, uh, 